Hey everybody, welcome back. Brand new show here in the Cabral Concept. No doubt this will most likely be a controversial one as well. I found it controversial and I'm the one actually reading a lot of this research on a daily basis. I couldn't believe it myself, but it is why I keep an open mind. It honestly is. Uh, all I care about is the truth. I honestly, all I care about is the truth and that is what I love to be able to share. But at the same time, I, I love the open discussion. So if you feel differently, and you have other research studies, feel free to leave them in the comments below. We're all here to learn, we're all here to grow. But one of the biggest things we hear over and over is that you don't wanna consume omega-3 fatty acids because they're a polyunsaturated fat. And polyunsaturated fats become oxidized very easily. And I've actually always agreed that polyunsaturated fats can become oxidized very easily. However, when it comes to omega-3s and fish oils, which is really what we're talking about, that is not the case. And we haven't seen that play out in our practice. Well, believe it or not, there's actually research on this and I can't believe they ran this study. So I'm gonna share with you the study. It's called Fish Oil. Well, there's multiple names to it, so I'm gonna link up the studies. Fish Oil Oxidation Products are not major contributors to the health effects of fish oil. I'll explain what that means. Other part is called resolvins in plasma and platelet activation in humans are increased by uh, docosopentanoic acid in concentrated fish oil, and it was published in the Journal of Lipid Research. I'll go through all of this, but here's, here's the premise, that you want to stay away from omega-3s because many of them are oxidized, and because of that, you're going to be causing greater free radical issues inside the body. So I said, you know what? That's, that's worth exploring. That is worth doing a deep dive on. And so that's what I did. And so here's what I found. And it's really fascinating that the industry, since at least 2014, has agreed. All of the big functional medicine companies that are GMP certified, so good manufacturing practice certified, have in they've actually created their own standards of manufacturing which don't even allow below a certain or above a certain level of oxidation. The FDA didn't need to regulate this. The FDC doesn't need to step in. They actually did this themselves, which is I thought pretty fantastic. But I said, okay, but there's no doubt on Amazon or at Costco, these big bottles of fish oil, and there's no doubt that they're oxidized. Like there's no doubt about it. I'm sure they're oxidized. So this study actually said, hey, let's look at oxidized fish oil and the effects it has on its body. All right, so I'm gonna share with you exactly what it said. Oxidation of eicosapentaenoic acid, that's EPA, and docosohexanoic acid, that's DHA, rich omega-3s, now referred to as EPA and DHA in the study, is a complicated topic, but an important one to understand. Uh, let's see. In addition, uh, consumers note some articles that have raised concerns about potential adverse effects associated with consumption of oxidated oils. Measuring oxidation in omega-3 oils is complicated due to differences in chemical and physical characteristics. They just start to go into this. Uh, but... They've now looked at a number of consumer advocacy groups, product quality seal programs, and academic groups that have published data on levels of oxidation in omega-3 oils. And overall, this data shows that commercially available omega-3 supplements are low in oxidation. So overall, omega-3s that are on the market in general that they've looked are low in oxidation. Now, I'll give you some reasons at the end. But here's, what they, here's ultimately what they said in three lines. Omega-3 products usually contain antioxidants and have specialized manufacturing that helps them manage the oxidation, oxidation process. The omega-3 industry has voluntarily established lower maximum limits for oxidation than exist for other edible oils, meaning like they will not allow oxidation, oxidated omega-3 oils in the industry. More than 2,000 tests results available from scientific literature, third-party testing labs, and industry monitoring show that more than 94% of omega-3 products meet the stricter GOED limits 
per peroxide, so basically oxidation breakdown, value in 98% meet the limit for uh, anisidine, I believe is how you pronounce it, p-anisidine uh, value. So basically just looking at oxidation. So how is this possible? And then they go on to say this, that when they actually tested humans with the oxidized omega-3 oil that they could find, so they used oxidized omega-3 oil in this study, just because I wanted to say, it still improved cardiovascular outcome. That was the amazing thing. And the study on that was, as I talked about, uh, resolvin resolvins and plasmid plate activation. They actually found that although the oil was oxidized, because of the EPA and DHA, which I like, I continued to like <laughs> bang the drum on because there, there's almost no other nutritional supplement with more studies on it. But here's what they found because of the, because the EPA and DHA is so anti-inflammatory, whatever oxidation was in the oil, in the polyunsaturated fats, and by the way, most of these are not heated at a high heat to cause oxidation. I'll talk about that at the end. But because of the EPA and DHA, it overwhelmed what oxidation was there. So not only was it not harmful, even the oxidized fish oil was helpful in cardiovascular disease, meaning it promoted a improvement in cardiovascular function, which, was the, which is still the number one cause of death. So it still improved cardiovascular function, even though it was oxidized because of the levels of EPA and DHA. And as I've talked about before, that is because it decreases something called eicosanoids. And that is prostaglandins, series two, thromboxanes, leukotrienes, and then they further work downstream to cytokines, inflammatory cytokines, such as histamines and other effects in the body. So now we understand, I talked about this last week as well with the uh, fatty 15 product versus omega-3s, why omega-3s are not a replaceable product. They're the only thing of its kind. It is one of the main reasons why the Mediterranean diet shows over and over and over again, it is the foundation of all diets. Now, you can play with it however you want. You can do a grain-free Mediterranean diet. That's basically what I do right? But I have some grains. I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I have oatmeal and some like that. But what I want to share with you is you don't need to be eating bread and pasta. Like that's not what the Mediterranean diet's about. It's about brightly colored fruits and veggies, fish, omega-3s, some nuts, lots of olive oil. And so we have to understand is that there are reasons why these things continue to be proven over and over that they work. Now we know all the fears from the industry of oxidized fish oil, even if you were to take oxidized fish oil, which by the way, I am not recommending. Please don't do that. I'll share with you in just one moment how to look for a good one. But even if it was oxidized, it's still beneficial. So I hope that this kind of puts all of that to rest. And for people that are getting fish burps or whatever it is, it's often not the fish oil. That's what was talked about here as well. It's oftentimes just weak digestion. Take it mid-meal, take a digestive enzyme or two, or maybe a little betaine HCL or a little bit of apple cider vinegar if you need to. But oftentimes it's weak digestion, and that, that's part of the issue. Okay, so now what to look for? Because again, you don't want oxidized fish oil. I'm not saying that you should, right? But now we know that 94% were clean, and 98% um, met you know, a, a really high level of standard as well. Okay, so that means 9.4% brands out of 10 pass, right? But 0.6 don't. So that's, that's still an issue. And so here's what you want. The first thing you want to look for is a GMP sale on that bottle. Good manufacturing practices. Every bottle of nutritional supplements that you use should have GMP on it. Not food necessarily, but supplements. Supplements should say GMP, good manufacturing practices. Now you already know that it follows the standard of care for oxidation. So that's a great place to start. Next, you would like a triglyceride bound omega-3. Why? Because that is what's bioavailable to the body. That's the omega-3s that you would get with fish, okay? So triglyceride bound 
omega-3. Most functional medicine companies, that's what they use. Why? The research is the best on it, so that they usually use best researched. Okay, so the next one is, do you want a low mercury fish in that product? It could be anything, honestly. Any low mercury fish, because they were extracting the EPA and DHA. Typically, it's anchovies, it's sardines, it's mackerel, it's um, wild trout, wild salmon, could even be wild Alaskan pollock, which we've used in the past. So you want a good quality, lower mercury fish, and then you want it heavy metal tested. So the company should have third party heavy metal testing. So now you know you're not getting any mercury or other metals in your fish oil. Last two items are this. You wanna look for, if you're using a liquid, you want to look for a, I wish I had a bottle on me right now, I just don't, but you want a small bottle that's no more than a 30 to 60 day supply that has a little plastic stopper on the top. They're all plastic, unfortunately, it has to be plastic. It's in a glass bottle typically and in a dark bottle so it can't be oxidized more, but it, what it does is that little stopper doesn't allow a lot of oxygen back in. It's almost like a one-way valve. It helps to prevent it from oxidizing the oil and it's a slow pour out. So that's a, that's a little tip that I didn't know about until I started to actually work a little bit in this industry. All right, the last one is this. In general, you want a, you don't want the big bottle at Costco or BJ's, and that's what I used to buy way back in the day because it was cheaper. The problem is those are the ones that at manufacturing may not be oxidized, but when you have a bottle that's been open for three, four, five, six months, it's going to go rancid over time. That'll happen to all oils. It really will. But since there is a sensitive nature to fish oil, you want to have a bottle for really no more than two months. That's a good amount of time uh, to have that bottle of nutritional supplements. For herbs, it could be months. But really, once you've opened that bottle, you want to use it for fish oil within a couple of months or any olive, it could be olive oil, any oil in general. So that's it. But again, when in doubt, even if it is oxidized, as I said, you still get benefit from it. But truthfully, we always want to use the cleanest product, the safest product possible for our families. That's what I use for my two daughters, for myself as well. What I use, I can't link up here today. Uh, you can always find what I use over at Equal Life. My entire practice is at stephencabral.com slash shop. I use daily omega-3 support, but you can just look at what we use, and then you can go for your favorite brand. You don't need to use what we use in our practice. Uh, what I can tell you is that we run the third-party testing uh, with a third party, of course, but we also run omega-3 to omega-6 lab testing right at home, which is also third party. So you can find out if you're getting the right amount of omega-3s for you. I absolutely recommend that. I can link that lab up, so I'll link that up today at stephencabral.com slash 3175. I will link up the clinical research. I just can't link up the nutritional supplements. But now you know what to look for. Hopefully this was helpful. Of course, do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.